Right now we're going to move on to our next report and we're going to go take a look at Desman Diabetes Institute in collaboration with the University of Dundee in Scotland uh, recently organized on Sunday February 8th a graduation ceremony for the first batch of graduates of the master's program. Let's now go to this report and then be back with our guests right here in the studio. Stay tuned. The University of Dundee and the Smand Diabetes Institute, or DDI, celebrated three years of delivering postgraduate diabetes education in Kuwait. Diabetes is a significant problem in Kuwait, where it has been estimated that up to one in four of the adult population suffers from the disease. Since 2011, the University of Dundee, a world leader in clinical diabetes care and diabetes research, in partnership with the Desmond Diabetes Institute, have created and delivered a postgraduate master's program in diabetes care, education and management. This program is available to a wide range of Kuwait-based healthcare professionals who study part-time while in work. Well, it's a wonderful occasion, very happy for all those graduates who've now got their masters or their postgraduate diplomas. But I think it's more than just the success for the individual students, which is great. But it also represents the best of cooperation, I think, between Kuwait and the United Kingdom and Scotland in particular. And the University of Dundee and the Dasman Diabetes Institute can be very proud of the cooperation they've had over recent years and that they have now produced uh, um, qualified uh, masters, certificate, postgraduate certificate holders who can go out and continue to work in improving clinical care for diabetes sufferers. Today was the first time that we started the graduation ceremony to give master degree and that by itself is something that has been we have not been able to do it before but we had number of them of the graduation they, they, they took the degree and it is important for Kuwait that to have more and more people knowing diabetes and its complications especially the doctors who are treating us and with this it is possible to make some changes on how we deal with the diabetes in the country because the people have to know how to do it. The doctors should know more of how to deal with the patients and how to do it with the doctors. Very special day for Kuwait and Scotland. We've celebrated a great partnership over the past four years where we've offered a certificate uh, and degree courses in diabetes education and management. And today we're celebrating success because 44 students graduated. The graduation ceremony marks the successful achievements of over 50 postgraduate students, including the first master's level graduates. For them all, graduation at the Desman Diabetes Institute is the pinnacle of three years of hard work and dedication, and the celebration brings together dignitaries from across Kuwait and Scotland to celebrate their considerable achievements. Well, we're back uh, right here in the studio, and I hope you enjoyed a look at that graduation ceremony uh, recently held at the Sman Diabetes Institute. And our guest this evening right here in the studio, we have uh, with us uh, Professor Mary Scott, and uh, Professor Scott is the Program Director of the Masters in Diabetes Care, Education and Management between the Sman Diabetes Institute and the University of Dundee in Scotland. Professor Scott, we'd like to welcome you to Hela Kuwait. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. Nice to have you with us right here in the studio. Maybe we could start out by uh, telling our audience a little bit about uh, how this collaboration started between uh, DDI and the University of Dundee in Scotland. Uh, a little bit about that history, please. Okay. Like, well, like many things, it happened between a chance meeting between two people who shared the same interests and were clearly committed to improving healthcare in terms of diabetes. And so Professor Morris and Professor Kazim Bipahani met back in 2010 and um, Professor 
chasm based on the work he knew that Professor Andrew Morris had been doing in Scotland was really keen that we brought some of the ideas that we'd been developing in Scotland to Kuwait to help tackle the same problem which is the burden of, of uh, the disease caused by diabetes mellitus. Yeah. yeah unfortunately diabetes is on the rise in Kuwait and not just Kuwait worldwide yeah. professor. Yes I mean it's a problem in Scotland too nothing like as severe as it is here mm -hmm. but it is a significant problem and um, caused a lot by um, lifestyle factors and for us to the increase in ageing of our population, not such a big problem here. So maybe Professor Scott, tell us a little bit about how that relationship's developed over the years between DDI and Dundee. Okay, well it's been a really exciting and um, it's really a very strong relationship now. So it started off with shared values and a shared dream to try and do something that would help the population. Um, in terms of health and um, Professor Morris conceived of a kind of transformational change program and it had four components to it and the first component was that we would look at standardizing health care mm -hmm. in terms of diabetes and we d we've done this in Scotland this, and we did that with guidelines the second was that we would use informatics to make sure that clinicians were able to access real-time data about their patients' care and so offer the best care related to the guidelines. The third was about education and that's my uh, remit in the programme which was to upskill the workforce to mm -hmm. be able to have a team-based team approach to care to tackle the demand because doctors can't do this on their own. And the fourth, um, which is if you like the jewel in the crown for the future, is the research. So um, out of the collaboration, we hope we'll be able to establish a really strong research platform where we can look into the causes and try and do so something ultimately to prevent diabetes. So a lot of our audience watching right now are familiar with Scotland because uh, <laughs> many used to go probably to the University of Glasgow and so <laughs> forth and Scotland is a very beautiful country. Uh, but tell us a little bit about uh, the University of Dundee in Scotland. Tell us about the university, please. Okay. Well, the University of Dundee in Scotland, in particular the medical school, is very well placed to do this, which is why Professor Morris um, as he was able to export the idea. And the reason being that the medical school is bedded into the major hospital in NHS Tayside, which okay. is the east part of Scotland. And so in order, we work really well with our healthcare colleagues and the academics, so the education and research and the clinical part of all of that all sits together in, in, in Tayside and the University of Dundee. We're a small university, um, but we definitely punch way above our weight when it comes to research and clinical care. Okay, and on Sunday, uh, February 8th, uh, there was a graduation ceremony. Uh, the report we took a look at before we came into the interview uh, held at DDI for the first level master's graduates. So tell our audience a little bit about that ceremony. How was it? How how did that morning go? Right. Well, it was a fantastic day. It was really wonderful. It was wonderful to see the students who'd come in so early into the programme now graduate with a master's. And we had 16 of them graduating with a master's. And we had others who'd done just as well, but took a diploma and certificate as their, uh, as their, as their degree. Um, it was great fun. It was, um, I think it was a prestigious ceremony. It was very like the kind of ceremonies that we would have in and Dundee. And Professor Scott, we're taking a look oh, at yeah. some of the footage on okay. the uh, monitor there. Okay. Can you talk about what you were just saying and, yeah. and the footage comment on that too? So what we did was we, um, if you like, replicated what we do in Dundee and brought it to Kuwait. And it's the first time we've done a graduation ceremony like this out of, out of Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we were uh, enjoying the experience and trying out some new things. Um, so we had the necessary people there, so um, Professor Connell was there on behalf of the Chancellor and the Chancellor did have a video uh, uh, welcome to us all. Um, Professor um, Morris was taking on the part of the Dean of the Medical School and so the students experienced exactly what the students would and have many done. many of the students and their family their members there too. Yeah, their family were there which was um, also great fun because having known the students for three years I hadn't met many of them, I hadn't met their families and it was lovely to do that. Um, because the families had supported the students. And Dr. Ahlal Sayer, uh, former uh, Minister of Health, yes. Professor Sayer, and also there. Yeah, a great supporter of the program. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, he also um, has been uh, a graduate of Aberdeen. So uh, there's a strong connection there to Scotland as well with Dr. Halal. Overall, it was a great day, I believe. A lot of people attended. Nice. Uh, ceremony there between yep. uh, uh -huh. three and of the big people at this event. Yeah, and, and the nice thing was later on the graduates and we went across to the embassy, the British embassy, for a, sh a reception hosted by the ambassador, which was again a lovely thing to do. And um, he gave a nice, a nice presentation speech as well. Um, himself, I think he might have shown that earlier.
Yeah. Yeah, it was. There he is, His Excellency, he is. Yeah. the right. Right. British Ambassador to the State of Kuwait, was yeah. uh, kind enough to attend the event and yeah. mm -hmm. say a few words mm -hmm. of encouragement mm -hmm. to the graduates. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. Professor Kazim Bahbahani, uh -huh. uh, Professor Andrew Morris, they're yes. uh -huh. presenting the uh, certificates and uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, momento of appreciation to the graduates yes. there. So, I mean, there's no doubt that the UK government really values the relationship we have with Kuwait, as does the Scottish government, of course, because we have got our own government. But yeah, so it was a great day. We just all had such good fun. Yeah, it's a, a strong uh, friendship between yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the UK, Scotland and Kuwait that goes back decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, that collaboration has continued with the DDI and the University of Dundee. And now the current program, Professor Scott, tell us about the program structure, the teaching style, the modules offered currently. Right. Okay, so we have a range of different options in terms of modules because people come from all different backgrounds. We have pharmacists, nurses, podiatrists, we have physicians, general practitioners. Um, it's, it's a really broad program. We have educationalists, we have people from a lab-based background and we now have people from a management-based background. So they do core modules in their own area of discipline and then they do a range of different modules from different choices, clinical, organisational, research and um, um, uh, I just one, uh, um, research, uh, educational ones. Okay. And so they can pick their own way through the programme if you like. So every student will do something that is unique to them but is most suitable. The assignments are all workplace based projects so they can start to bring about change already and they've done over 750 projects in the three years. That's great. It's fantastic and they do, they, they, they work really hard, they're all working, this is an additional thing to them and I'm just so proud of them all, I think they're terrific. Yeah, you've got a, a nice group uh, this yeah. time around. They're and lovely. Yeah. They're really doing very mm -hmm. well. And uh, how have you seen the feedback so far from the students uh, this time around? Yeah, the students really enjoy it. And I think the thing they enjoy the most is the interactive nature. Okay, a very small part of the teaching that we do here is, is lecturing. We really, I, I say I don't lecture. Okay, so we do a lot of group interactive activities. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of skills. They do role plays. They look at video materials. They present posters themselves. So the, 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 the whole program has a lot of energy about it because students are working all the time, they're talking all the time, they're not just sitting listening to us lecture, which is not the intention of the program at all. So good interaction oh, with the uh, professors, yeah. the teachers and the yeah, students. Yeah. Huh? I mean, I have to say the students in Kuwait, they are so interactive, they're so engaging, they're so keen and willing to tell you what they think and what their ideas are. It's wonderful, it's a joy to teach. Really. Well, it's good to hear that you're having a good time and yeah. a good experience here in Kuwait the past few years. and. Uh, we touched on earlier, you know, diabetes is such a significant problem uh, in Kuwait and worldwide. In, in Kuwait, it's uh, been estimated that one in four of the adult population suffers from the disease. So how does the University of Dundee and NHS uh, Tayside, uh, the partnership that they have and their diabetes specialization, how do you feel that helps in your work in Kuwait and how can that even be developed further? Okay. Well, as I said, you know, there are similarities in the fact that um, we have similar populations, but mm -hmm. we took on this managed clinical network approach. So all of the people working with patients with diabetes do exactly the same thing, same standard and guidelines. And that across the board has made a significant difference to the outcomes, particularly in terms of complications of diabetes. So we've seen a significant reduction in amputations. We've seen a significant reduction in loss of eyesight due to di complications of diabetes. And that will continue to improve as time goes on and that approach is what we're trying to help in Kuwait bed into the system because that standardized consistent approach means patients are well cared for they're also able to care for themselves which is another very important part of the program and um, that uh, that and that, that will ultimately make a difference to the outcomes for patients with diabetes here in Kuwait just as it has done in Scotland. Why is uh, Professor Scott why is diabetes on the increase uh, worldwide I mean what's What's the problem? What's going well, on? Well, it's a combination of things. It seems like people are trying their best. Yeah. Uh, there's this trend mm -hmm. even worldwide to eat healthy, exercise, but still diabetes is like seem to get the control yeah. of them. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it is about lifestyle issues um, and it is improving. You're right. Um, gradually, the messages are getting across. Children are healthier. 
um, but there's still a long way to go. And, um, and the other thing is for us, of course, we have an ageing population and of course with ageing comes the pre increased prevalence of diabetes and then comorbidity that goes with that. So that's an issue for us. Um, but actually, it, and that's, a bit, that's because healthcare is better, so people live longer. Um, so there's a bit of an inevitability about this, but it, it is reversible. It doesn't need to carry on like this. So what bit of, I mean, since you're also an expert in the field, and so what, what bit of advice would you give for the audience watching right now on how to you know, avoid diabetes, and if they have it, how to better manage, you know? Right, okay. I mean, that's, I think a, that that's a big question and takes a lot of time yeah. to answer, but briefly, if you could sum that up. I think the major thing for, for people is to be aware of it, so that's the first thing, and therefore to maintain a healthy lifestyle if possible. And that's not just about diet, it's about exercise, and it's also about general wellness. If they are diagnosed with diabetes, then it is important that they do take responsibility, if you like, for their own care, mm -hmm. because as they say, they're with their own self 100% of the time, and they're with a healthcare professional for maybe 1% of the time. So to become better educated, to, to be, help other, other people will help them who've already got the condition, um, and to generally approach it in a way of, this is not a terrible thing in my life, this is my life, this is part of my life, and I will therefore use that in a useful way to, be, to stay as healthy as possible given that um, and it is to say it is really doable um, and so people should be encouraged by that. So um, do you see any new medicines coming up on the horizon at all that you would like to share with if you know of yeah. anything new? Well I'm a general and family medicine so I'm not accurate but I do know that the research is another key part of it as I mm -hmm. said earlier that's the fourth part of this transformational program and I, I think you know general medical research today is a really fantastic there's loads of opportunities in terms of genetic research and new technology all the time which can make a big difference and that's part of the vision of Dasman I know and that's one of the things that we hope to work with them in the future. Yeah, how do you see that uh, collaboration in the future DDI yeah. and the yeah. University of Delhi? So we're looking to work with them for um, more of the biomedical research, a new master's program and a PhD program and we hope to collaborate widely in Kuwait with others. The PhD program will be with the University of Edinburgh and UCL and ourselves and Dasman and as I say hopefully others here in Kuwait and um, we'd be very keen to work with them so that we can do something about enhancing the research capability here as well as back in Scotland and the UK. Yeah, it's well, exciting. It is, it's an exciting time and uh, I hope you've had a great stay in the state of Kuwait and we hope to see you once again right here in Kuwait and we'd like to thank you so much for joining us right here on Hela Kuwait. Well, thank you again for inviting me. Thank you very much you. and uh, we were speaking to Professor uh, Mary Scott and uh, Professor Scott is the Program Director of the Masters in Diabetes Care, Education and Management between Desman Diabetes Institute and University of Dundee in Scotland and we wish them all the best of luck in their future endeavors. And with that, we come to the end of tonight's episode of Hella Kuwait. Hope you enjoy the rest of your reviewing tonight and all throughout the week right here on KTV2, the family channel. Before I leave, you remember to always take care of yourselves and each other, and let's always remember to respect one another. Have a nice evening, and good night for now. <laughs>